Hello there, I'm Thundaga, and welcome to my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. This will be a quick tutorial where we cover how to install the Generation 9 Resource Pack by Karuban. A link to download this pack will be in the video description. Now, let's get into it! As a quick warning though, this tutorial requires installing a plugin for Essentials version 21.1, so if you're working with an older version of Essentials, or you already have other Pokemon plugins installed that may be incompatible, then this won't work for your project. Now, before we get started, there are three things that you should do. The first thing, obviously, would be to download the resource pack itself. You can do that by clicking the Go to Download button here in the top right of the Relic Castle resource page. The next thing that you should do is make sure that you've downloaded the latest version of the V21.1 Hotfixes plugin. At the time of this recording, 1.0.7 is the latest version. If you have an older version of the Hotfixes, it may not be compatible with the Gen 9 Resources plugin, so just make sure you grab the latest. As you can see here, I've got the Gen 9 Resources Pack and the V21.1 Hotfixes already downloaded here. The last step that we should do, though, is make sure that we make a backup of our game project. If anything goes wrong, we should have a backup that we can go back to. So let's just copy and paste this folder real quick. This will take some time, but now it's almost done, and there we go, we've got ourselves a backup. Now that we've got our project backed up, as well as everything downloaded, we're ready to get going. The next step will be to copy things over from the Gen 9 Resources Pack folder into our Games Project folder. So what I've got here is the Gen 9 Resources Pack open on the left, and our Games Project folder open on the right. What we want to do is we want to copy over the Audio, Graphics, and Plugins folders into our Project folder. So let's hold Ctrl and click on each of these three, then use Ctrl C to copy them, then go into our Project folder and use Ctrl V to paste them in. This will take a while because we're copying over a lot of resources. Now here, when we're given the choice to replace the files in the destination or skip these files, what we should do is replace all the files in the destination. And there we go, it took a while, but now it's finally copied over the audio, graphics, and plugins that we need for the Gen 9 Resources Pack. As a summary of what we just copied over though, the audio has the cries for the new Pokemon, the graphics has battle animations, overworld sprites, Pokemon sprites, as well as some new item sprites and UI sprites, and plugins has some very important data for our Gen 9 Pokemon that we'll be using in a few. Next, let's go through the optional folder, because there is something here that we want. For this tutorial, we're mainly focused on the Pokémon. If you're interested, there is a bag screen and Gen 9 TM optional thing that we can grab as well, but right now, let's just grab the Gen 9 back sprites in vanilla style. What they mean by vanilla style is that these are smaller back sprites that fit our previous Pokémon back sprite size conventions. Let's go into this folder and copy the graphics, then go in and paste the graphics here so that way we can paste all of these vanilla back sprites into our project folder. And let's replace the files in destination. There we go, we've copied over the vanilla back sprites. Now let's also make sure to copy over this PBS file here. What this is, is the Pokemon metrics for our Gen 9 Pokemon sprites. What we can do is copy this and paste it directly into our PBS folder. One thing that's really nice about this too is that this only applies to the Pokemon that are added through the Gen 9 pack. Any Pokemon metrics for our other Pokemon will not be affected by this file. The last thing that we need to copy over are some PBS files in the PBS folder here. Let's go in and copy all of these except for the Pokemon metrics Gen 9 pack because we already copied over the one for the vanilla back sprites. So let's go and copy all these into our PBS folder. If you've made a lot of changes to your own Pokemon metrics, then don't replace this. Since I've only made a little bit of changes, I feel confident replacing this. And there we go, we're almost done. The last thing that we need to do is run a special script command in-game that allows a lot of our data for the Gen 9 plugin to compile. In your project, add an event, and then add a script command that runs the command compiler.update underscore Gen 9. Then, if we interact with this event in-game, it will compile all of our Gen 9 plugin resources. So let's do that right now. When running the game, let's hold left control so it compiles all of the plugins. There we go. We can see that it loaded the V21 hotfixes and it also loaded the Generation 9 resources pack plugin. So now that we've compiled the data by holding left control when running, now we just got to interact with this event and that will compile the rest of our Gen 9 data. Now one more time, let's close and reopen the project, and we should start to be able to see some Gen 9 Pokemon. Let's open the debug menu, and then let's go to Pokemon options, and let's do add Pokemon. And then let's start scrolling up and seeing some of these other Pokemon that we can give ourselves. Look at this, we could give ourselves a Coridon, a Miraidon. Look at all these other Gen 9 Pokemon. And we can go up further, and if I keep hitting A, let's see. Sorry, I'm scrolling through this list sloppily. 
but we can see Sinistee, Reggie Drago, Fuecoco. Look at all these Pokemon. I really like Fuecoco. Let's give ourselves one. Level 15. And let's go take it out in the party now. Look at that, Fuecoco. We copied over the icon sprites so we can see it here. Look at that. It has its cry. We can see the front battler sprite. Look at all these moves that our Fuecoco knows. Let's get into a battle with Fuecoco now as well. One thing that's really nice about doing the compile method there is that it doesn't overwrite any of the other PBS changes that we've made. So in the previous tutorial, we added a cam. Now we can fight a cam with our Fuecoco. Look at this. Let's kick Cam's butt. This Cam's a little bit of a jerk, so we need to take him out. Cam, Cam, how's it going? Oh, that's wonderful. Let's let's look at some other Gen 9 Pokemon we can give ourselves as well. If we go and we use Debug and Delete... Sorry, Fuecoco, I'm getting ready now. What we can do now is we can do Debug, Pokemon Options, Add Pokemon. And you know what? Maybe this time instead I'll give myself... A... How about a Walking Wake? That's kind of a cool Pokemon. Oh yeah, now I'm going to be able to crush any wild camps with this. Look at that, what a beautiful sprite. Oh my gosh. This is so cool! Look at that, it's pretty easy to install the Gen 9 Resources plugin. And that about does it for this quick tutorial on how to install the Generation 9 Resources plugin. As a disclaimer, I haven't tested every Pokemon and every move and every ability, so it's possible there may be some bugs here and there. I can't stress it enough though, this is an amazing plugin and it wouldn't have been possible without the contributions of Karuban and many other talented creators. Please be sure to credit everyone in the Gen 9 resource plugin credits list, because they all made this excellent plugin possible. I mean, in under 10 minutes we can get Generation 9 Pokemon in our project, as well as all the sprites for every Pokemon up to Gen 9, including overworld sprites? Not to mention all the moves and abilities and items? I mean, that's just incredible. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you learned something from this tutorial, please remember to like and subscribe. To access my tutorial website, please check the link in the video description. As a reminder, this tutorial series is for Pokemon Essentials version 21.1, so in the future, it's possible that the layouts of some things could be changed. In general though, this series should get you to where you need to go when it comes to making your own Pokemon fan game. And hey, if you're watching this in the future, and we've moved up to generation 10 or 11, I bet there's an amazing plugin somewhere out there for those Pokemon too. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something and I hope you have a good one. Best of luck to you and your Pokemon fan game endeavors. Bye now!